All right, guys, we're back, and we are looking at conservation of power for this little, yeah, well, it seems, it seems like these videos because I only have, well, literally, this small board to work with are becoming these like little mini lessons on these concepts, and so I, I, I miss having all three boards to actually work with. But for, for this one, we're going to be revisiting one of the problems that we considered in one of the prior videos where we were getting experience on sinusoidal steady state analysis and basically calculating voltages and currents and maybe a little bit of power within the system. So, so within these problems and within the stuff that we just got through with on test number two, we're now actually going to be looking at how we can actually start doing more than just analysis of an AC system and maybe how we can actually look at further concepts that allow us to actually manipulate maybe our circuit that could actually provide a, what, we, what we can say is more and a more efficient system, essentially. So, if we consider the conservation of power, and the conservation of power basically states that the, the amount of power that's actually supplied by the source is equal to the individual powers that are actually delivered to each element within the circuit. And so what we're going to look at today is basically a comparison between the original circuit and four specific powers that we're actually going to be providing basically the calculation for. And then we're actually going to see if we take the algebraic summation of all those powers and then sum those up to, to give us a total power, we're going to see if that compares correctly to basically the power that we would calculate directly from the source. So once again, the law of conservation of power states that the, sum, the, the summation, the algebraic summation of all the powers delivered to each element within the circuit is actually going to be equal to the power supplied by the source. So let's take a look. We're going to look at, look at basically four different branches with, within the circuit. We're going to look at the power across the 30 ohm resistor, and then we're going to look at basically the powers from S uh, from this branch, which we're going to denote as S1, the power delivered to this branch, S2, and then the power delivered to this branch for S3. And so going back to the prior problem, go back and reference the, uh, the prior video that we worked with, because we were actually able to go back and find basically the voltage across each branch for this problem. And that voltage came out to be equal to 6.7 to an 8 and an angle of negative 41.4 degrees. And we got also the current that was actually being supplied from the source and that was actually 0.6112 at an angle of negative 32.66 degrees amps. And so knowing this voltage and knowing that current we have the ability to go through and actually do the calculations for each complex power within the circuit. So, well, for those branches. So if we consider S1, S2, and S3, those calculations are super easy now because we have that, that RMS voltage. We can take its magnitude, square it, and then just simply divide it by basically the conjugate of the impedance. And so for here, when we did that calculation, considering 40, 40 minus J 111.1 ohms, then we actually take basically 6.7 squared and then divide it by that impedance, and we got 0.12196 minus J 0.36 volt amperes. Now, this makes sense because we have a resistive capacitive branch here. And that resistive capacitive branch should give us a negative value of that reactive power. And sure enough, that's exactly what we get. So if we look down at S2, so for the power that's actually going to be delivered to this branch, then 25 minus J74.07, we should get a negative reactive power again. And sure enough, if we take the same voltage, 6.72, square that, divide that by basically that branch is conjugate of the impedance, then we get 18.48 minus J.5476 volt amperes. And finally, on the left-hand side, we get 12 and then plus J.9. So we should get a positive reactive power for here. So considering this guy right here, then we get VRMS squared, once again, once again over the conjugate 
of basically the impedance, and then we get 3.7442 plus J, 0.2808 volt amperes. Now, what about, what about the power in that 30 ohm resistor here? Well, we got a 30 ohm resistor right up here, guys. Now, now, when we say the complex power, even if it's all resistive or all capacitive or all inductive, then we actually have to answer the question within volt amperes. Even though we may be all real power or it may be all reactive power, we still have to answer the question in terms of volt amperes. And so, considering the, the RMS current that was flowing out of that circuit. So here we got current flowing out of there and that was 0.6112 at an angle of negative 32.66 degrees. Then we get S30 and that's equal to IRMS squared and then multiplied by 30. And sure enough, there is no imaginary portion to this because we're looking at simply a resistor. And even though we know that any type of real power is actually measured in watts, we sure enough have to actually just say right here that 11.212 watts is actually going to be answered in terms of 11.212 volt amperes. All right. So if we go through and we type and we take the, the total summation of each of these, so S30, S1 plus S2 plus S3, we should basically get the total power that's actually supplied by that source. And so in this case, guys, if we go ahead and, and, and consider adding, taking the algebraic summation of each of these up, then sure enough, we get 15.127, and then one, that's watts minus J.6268 VAR, or 15.27 minus 0.6, roughly 0.63 volt amperes. So, that is actually the algebraic summation of all the powers that we actually calculated within each branch here, those four branches that we wanted to investigate. So what about the power supplied by the source? Huh. Well, let's take a look here. Well, we already had to find basically that current, and so all we have to do is take the RMS voltage from the source, take that current, take its conjugate, and multiply the two together. And there we go. Sure enough. We can either do that or actually go back to our original equation here. Both provide this exact same thing. Here we would just take 25 and square that and just divide it by the conjugate, the conjugate here of all the impedances in that series loop. And look what we got, guys. Bam. 15.2673 minus J.6239 volt amperes. They're virtually the same, except, you know, we got a couple of rounding errors in there, obviously. But that actually proves out that, sure enough, the algebraic summation of basically the, the powers delivered to each branch within the circuit, sure enough, that does come out to actually give us the same power as if we actually supplied that from the source. And note here that that algebraic summation it's completely independent of the idea that we got three parallel branches with series elements in, in, uh, in there, or the fact that we have basically a 30 ohm resistor that's in series with that voltage source. It doesn't matter. It's just the algebraic summation of all those delivered powers equaling the power that's actually supplied from the source. And so this principle, this idea of actually the power supplied equaling the power delivered is, is actually an amazing concept that allows us to actually create more efficiency within this circuit. And we could actually go, go through and try to lower the reactive power because if you guys remember what I said before, remember the, remember the reactive power is the foam on top of the beer and we don't want that foam there. We want to bring that, that reactive power down. And so what we're going to start looking at is what we call power factor correction. So in the next video, we're actually going to talk more about efficiency, which is actually deemed by the power factor. And then we're actually going to do a couple of things to see if we can actually basically increase the efficiency in the system by maybe adding elements to that circuit. Okay, see you next time.